All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the side splitter theorem here that we talked about today in class. So what this basically says here for the side splitter to work is that if we've got a triangle ABC and there's some line that comes through and splits two of the sides and that line just happens to be parallel to the third side that it doesn't split. So what we're basically saying here is that if DE is parallel to BC then it divides in this picture AB and AC proportionately. So the proportion, what that means is you could probably write is this proportion. AD over DB so the ratio of one piece to the other should be equal to AE over EC. So again, kind of the top piece to the bottom piece here. So we can definitely set up this ratio. We can do that using some similar triangles and a little bit of algebra tricks that we can look at tomorrow in class. But for uh, today, we kind of saw this with GeoGebra. We know that this is true. We'll prove why it's true later. But for now, let's assume this is true. We can set up another proportion just by swapping the two numbers that are on the means spots, right? We know that we can swap those two and we'll get another equivalent proportion that works just as well. And if we write it this way, it kind of leads us to our next statement. So if we have AD over AE, that should be the same thing as DB over EC. And this is just another way to think about these two proportions in this picture. The bottom proportion is basically saying that AD, the kind of left side of our picture, the top left, is in ratio with AE, the segment across from it in the triangle. And that's going to be the same ratio as if we take this bottom segment, DB, and set it up to be in ratio with the bottom segment on the other side, EC. So not only can we set up a ratio from the top left to the bottom left, and, the, and that set that equal to the top right and the bottom right, we can also set up a ratio of left to right and then the other matching left to right. And it kind of depends on the given information on which one of those proportions that you're going to want to use. Now, the nice thing about this bottom proportion that we just finished talking about is that it extends nicely in case we have more than one parallel lines. So if we take a look at this next picture, here we've got a situation where we've got two lines and we've got four parallel lines. So all of these lines here are parallel. So that argument that we just made using the triangle with one parallel line extends out to this situation. We could see here, if we start pairing up sides that are across from each other, so say AB and EF, the ratio of those sides should be equal to the same ratio as any other segments that are across from each other. So like BC over FG or CD over GH. We could even pick off segments here that aren't just the smallest segments. So if, for example, if I were to look at AC and EG, those should also be proportional to the rates that we already saw. So AC over EG, we could go the whole thing, AD compared to EH, all of those should be the same ratio and that's just basically an extension to that side splitter theorem. Let's look at how to use these in some actual problems. We take a look at this problem, very straightforward. It tells us that DE is parallel to BC. It tells us that AD has a length of 6, that DB has a length of 10, that AC, so the whole side, has a length of 20, and what we're looking for is the length of EC. So let's go ahead and call that X. So when we solve for X, we are finished with the problem here. And let's go ahead and set up a proportion. Looking at our side splitter theorem, we, again, we have the choice. We could kind of do AD to DB, so top to bottom on the left side, 
equal to AE over EC, top to bottom on the right side, or we could do AD over AE, kind of left to right on the top, equal to DB over EC, left to right on the bottom. Regardless of which proportion we use, we should get the same answer. Let's just go ahead and take that first one that we wrote down. We know that the length of AD is 6, that DB is 10. AE, we don't know, but if we know the whole length of AC is 20, and EC is X, this should be 20 minus X for AE. And then EC is just X. When we use our means extremes property to cross multiply this, we get 6X is equal to 200 minus 10X. So 16X equals 200. And we can now see that X is 200 over 16, or 100 over 8, or 50 over 4, or how about 25 over 2. Okay, so we were able to solve for x, which represents the length of EC. Looking at one last example here where we have this extension going on. So again, we've got all these parallel lines. We know that AB is 5 in this picture, BC is 4, CD is 3, EH, so this whole side, is 10. And we're trying to find the length of EF to F, FG and GH. So what we can start by doing is let's find the ratio of this whole side, AD, to this whole side, EH. Because we know that the ratio of AD to EH should be equal to the ratio of any two pairs that we pick to match up. So it should be the same ratio as AB to EF. It should be the same ratio as BC to FG. And it should be, should be the same ratio of CD to GH. So when we look at the ratio of AD to EH, we can see that 5 plus 4 plus 3 is going to give us 12. So AD to EH is 12 to 10. So if we set that equal to the ratio of, say, AB to EF, we know AB is 5. We can very easily solve for EF just by cross-multiplying. 12 times EF is going to equal to 50. So EF is equal to 50 over 12, or when we reduce that down, uh, 25 over 6. We can then do the exact same process. Set the ratio of AD, 12 to 10, equal to the ratio of BC over FG. We know BC is 4. FG, we don't know. We can cross multiply to get 12 times FG is equal to 40. And now we know that FG is 40 over 12, which reduces down to 20 over 6, which reduces down to 10 thirds. We could set up the final proportion. Again, we know that the ratio of AD to EH, so 12 to 10, is equal to the ratio of this time CD to GH. We know CD is 3. GH we don't know. We cross multiply to get that 12 times GH is equal to 30. So GH is 30 over 12, which reduces down to be 15 over 6.